Hey everyone. Hello. Uh, this this means Presidente. Presidente in Albanian means hello, and in many languages, I think, I guess. Um, first of all, I'd like to. This is my first state of the map. Uh, I've never been to any of uh, the other editions before. I've seen some material online, but so far it's been uh, amazing and. Really thanks to the guys that have organized it and the uh, volunteers. It's um, uh, at being an organizer myself, I can only imagine how much work it's put being done behind this and after the conference as well. So thank you. So uh, two words about myself. Uh, I am based in a city. I, I was born in a small city called El Basan. Um, it's it's quite a, a small city in a small country. Not much things to do. Uh, the only thing I really enjoyed when I was a kid be behind like playing football a lot from day until my parents coming out shouting about going in. Uh, but also my, my home was next to the train lines, uh, which also is connected with my fascination um, and interest in, in train systems. And this interest in the train systems also um, made me understand that I'm, I'm really fascinated with systems, how things work in general. Uh, I don't know if you, any of you that is, plays around with the, like train models uh, or train rail systems, but it's quite, quite interesting. And it's also connected to things people do in technology in general because starting from the operating system of a computer to anything else, um, it's related to one system connected to, to other systems and how these things uh, connect together. This is a Soviet era uh, main machine. And it's uh, act actually right now, there are only a few of, of them left. And hopefully, they're going to keep it. So El Basan, is, that I mentioned before, is in, in Albania. It's very closely. It's like one hour and a half by plane from uh, from Rome and something more from it, from Milan, and uh, it's quite a due to the fact that it's a it's a small country uh, and other reasons there are not much as I mentioned before there are not much things getting produced there as well. So the only interesting thing, in fact, if you have not been there, um, is that before 1991 uh, we had a very close regime which uh, also was the, the guy who he was heading the, the system was kind of paranoid. He built more than uh, 170,000 bunkers waiting for the enemy to come, any enemy that was out there. Uh, the, you can, if you travel around, you can see, I met some people that were, have been in Albania cycling uh, before, and it's quite interesting, in my opinion, as uh, one of the things to see. And you can see them in the mountains, but also at the sea as well. So it's also the home of tavmekos, which is a very non-healthy food based on yogurt and uh, meat. Yet the yogurt is baked, and it's also some of a trademark of the city I'm in. Uh, I'm, I was sharing this because for, for me personally, every time I, I've, I've been to quite some conferences related to free and open source events and technologies, and uh, for me it's very interesting to understand um, what people do in general, and the most important part, why they do these things. Uh, and for me, I, th I think one, one of the elements was the train system, but the other one was also the fact that I moved to Athens in the late 90s with my family. Uh, in, and I was hanging around uh, in a neighborhood called Exarchia. Exarchia is home of, the, of, a very, of, of a very big community of people that are very politically engaged in one level or the other. And going to these places, uh, to, to these meetings, uh, although I didn't know what my, my interest was in those, I started understanding that in general in life, it's very important to do things, uh, not, not work because you need to work, but also to do things in a certain way because you believe to do them. Um, with this, all these lessons in mind, I went back to Tirana in Albania and uh, co-founded Open Labs Hackerspace, which actually is still the only hackerspace active, well, young, mostly young people. Uh, I am one of the 
all this there, uh, hang around and play around with any, any kind of technology. It's a very small sp uh, space. Mainly, we are interested in open source, free and open source technology and, um, and any kind of thing related with that. We've, we play a lot with open data, with, we fight for online privacy, uh, which is not very easy to, to do in, in Albania, and other stuff. This is from a, uh, this is from a crypto party we organized uh, last year. We have a yearly conference called OSCAL Open Source Conference Albania. Um, and we, a lot of people gather them. One of the projects that we are heavily involved is also OpenStreetMap. And in the beginning, I started editing OpenStreetMap in 2012. I was not very interested. Uh, I just wanted to learn the technology and what, what's behind it. And uh, during my daytime, I was using Google Maps or, or other uh, services in general. And this is the, this is the page, my OpenStreetMap page. And you can see until 2015, the edits are quite at a low level. 2016, uh, I started getting a lot of attention. And I was, the, one of the reasons was that because, because of the fact that I saw that there are many, many OpenStreetMap projects around them. Some of them you can see at the info booth uh, outside, maps.me, OSMN, uh, Mapbox, which is uh, also a very interesting project. And I find it fascinating that a, a layer like OpenStreetMap uh, can empower such so much things um, that are very, very different between them. Uh, people that like to buy, buy to go to, to use their, their bicycle can use dedicated apps. Uh, but what I found is that uh, my conclusion was two things. First of all, that you can do also yourself interesting stuff with uh, using OpenStreetMap data. Uh, but also, the, the majority of the apps that had actually were there had things that I didn't like. Uh, they were kind of a, like a Swiss knife. Some of them had the tendency to put all the things together and just save your life with all the features that are, that are there. Um, so as I mentioned before, I was quite amazed on, uh, on what you can do. Uh, and I, two years ago, I, I started not only editing more, but also trying to explore ways of u utilizing um, the OpenStreetMap data in a very, very interesting uh, way. One, 2016, and, uh, and that years, in the three, two, two to three years before, I also started going, as I mentioned, to many free and open source conferences. And I was staying to hotels and uh, other places, Airbnb. Uh, and and uh, usually I had this need to, as, as all of us, I have this need to, to find some water before at a late night, night in, the late, in, the, in the evening, or have a, like, Go to a drugstore to have some like painkillers if you if you if you need or other services that you don't. Are, these are not brands like McDonald's or other stuff. Uh, these are services that everybody needs. And I couldn't find. Usually, when you go to services, OpenStreetMap or based or, or other services, proprietary ones. Usually, you you know you, you know how to go from point A to point B, and you know what the point B is. So what I needed was something that. You don't know, you know the service that you need, but you don't know what the destination, what the brand is. So usually this is a project for people that travel from big city, in big cities, live in big cities, but also travel to big cities as well. Um, and for me also privacy is very important. There's a huge discussion from, uh, with political elements now uh, related to privacy from Facebook selling uh, data and helping for the Brexit campaign, but also uh, getting uh, involved with the U.S. elections, um, there is all. I'm not talking. I'm not just not starting about Google and whatever happens with our personal data there. So I'm very concerned about this. And traveling to, especially to to cities or countries in the in Central Europe, but not, not only like staying in Berlin for a while. I understood that there, that there are a lot of people like me. And I was not the crazy guy in the in the in the room that was interested in this kind of uh, in the privacy elements. And also, I wanted to start editing more, but not from the browser or other tools. I wanted to edit from my phone. So these were the three things I thought I I was very interested in before starting the project. Um, by the way, as you might know, editing OpenStreetMap 
uh, by phone, it's not a very easy task because you need to, the screen is very small and you need to, you can do a lot of stuff, but only certain stuff, not all of those. So the project needed to be, to have some rules. One of the rules, as I mentioned before, is that it needs to be something that is community-led. This is what I learned from my days in Athens, right? Uh, and of course, free and open source uh, based, uh, privacy oriented. You cannot have online privacy. We know that 100%, but this needs to be something that we will try to have it out there. And also respects all the contribution, all the contributors equally. Some projects respect more the fact that you are contributing to the code, some others, uh, and they don't, and, uh, they don't uh, find it very interesting that you are doing a poster or design or stuff like that. Oh, a lot of open, free and open source projects do this. They validate more people that are into the technical side than uh, others, uh, or community-based side. So Citizen was the name of the project. Um, I, I guess it's obvious, but if it's not, it's like related to the cities and the fact that you need to be chilled about finding points of interest that you are, um, you are interested in. So that's why the Zen goes in. So it's a companion for your, for your needs to the city and uh, mainly big cities, but on, not only, right? And also tries to respect your privacy the, the, as much as it can. Uh, we launched it at, at FDroid. For you, that, for people that don't know it, FDroid is just like Google Play for Android, but it only hosts free and open source uh, apps. Uh, and one of the reasons is for privacy reasons. So FDroid doesn't know uh, how many, what apps you have installed, or uh, when, when, where are you, or you don't share any kind of sensitive information. And the majority of the apps that are on FDroid usually uh, do not ask for more permissions that they need to. Uh, I don't know if you have this feeling when you install an uh, Android, uh, on, on, an Android app on Google Play, they ask you for anything, like who you dated, when you dated it, uh, why, uh, political, like all, all, all of these things. Of course, FDroid uh, is based on Android and Android doesn't respect much of our privacy. But that's another discussion. And as I mentioned before, privacy is very important. And that's why we are only on Android right now. We understand that it's not very convenient. Uh, but having read all these things about what these companies like uh, uh, Google and Facebook do with our data, uh, we will not go uh, on Google Play, at least for quite some time. So this is the early version of the design. It's quite uh, basic, and it's done with uh, not a lot of resources. Uh, these were the, first, the main service you can get, transportation, gas stations, uh, drugstores, ATMs, mobile phone, and markets and kiosks. Again, these are things that you probably will need if you are traveling somewhere, or you are living in a big city and you need them. If you are uh, going out of your, job, uh, of your work, you will... Uh, there are many drugstores you don't know that are around you, right? So we now have a new version that has more uh, services that you need and categories. Bakeries, pastries, restaurants, fast food, cafes, bars, transportation, parking, gas stations, bike rental, financial services. Financial services are banks and ATMs. Markets, which are supermarkets and also uh, very, like in, in Germany they have spedis, the small mini markets that are in the neighborhood. Uh, shopping, which might be shopping malls. Etc. So if you go in one of these categories, and since we are in, in Milan right now, I choose bakeries for the ice cream. And you can see the, the, what is around you uh, in that area, and also you can see them on the map. Um, if the information is on OpenStreetMap, you can also see if that, that shop is closed or open, so the status of it. If, if there is not an OpenStreetMap, open you don't get it. And also, if you click on one of these points of interest, you can get all the information that is also uh, on OpenStreetMap, not all the information, only the information, we've now put only the information that we think is relevant. Uh, usually what I do is I use the phone number to, uh, uh, in Tirana, when I'm in Tirana, I use the phone number to call, uh, for example, for food or, uh, or restaurants that I need food at my place. Um, there is also information like wheelchair access, etc., etc. 
Uh, one of, and if you click on directions by car, which is the only thing available right now, uh, you can see how to go to, from point A to point B by, uh, by car with the directions. So there are the categories you saw, map, search, favorites, and the about searching. So if you search for, again, we are in Milan, if you search for ice cream, um, the quality of the ice cream is gonna be great everywhere you go, but you can also go and see some of the things that are around uh, in your neighborhood at that point uh, of when you're doing the search. If you go on, on the map section, you can also check, uh, update your location, but you can also add a new point of interest on uh, OpenStreetMap directly from the app. If you have not logged in the first time, uh, you can log in using the interface, which is not very nice. This lets the, let this be between us in terms of the design, but uh, it can be improved. So you put there your username, your password, um, and you have a new point of interest with the basic information, name, uh, address, phone, website, email. And also you can put the opening hours, which in my, in my opinion are very important. Um, if it's open 24 seven or from Monday to, you can check also the date, uh, the time, the days when this is open. Um, this is, in general, the app, as you can find it right now. There is a big list of improvements uh, that uh, can be done. Uh, but in general, in general, this is the, what we have right now. It's only a one-year project, and it's a, we're doing it in our spare time with some ups and downs in between. Uh, we are in the Balkans, which means in summer th things uh, turn up to, to move more slowly, and we're going on vacations, but in September, we're going up. Uh, we're going back again, working on it. So if you get, if it, since this is a voluntarily based at the moment project, uh, how you can uh, get involved? There is all the code is published on Mozilla Public License, uh, which is free and open source software. It's categorized in free, free and open source software, and uh, you can go on the git on GitHub.com/slash/citizenapp, and I'll check all the repositories. One of the repositories, uh, the Android code, and you can uh, go there and improve, uh, to, you can check the issues, but also improve the code by yourself by sending, uh, opening a new issue. Um, this, these are some of the, some of the things. Uh, you can also improve uh, the website. The website is created by GitHub page, uh, by using GitHub pages, which means that you can uh, go on GitHub and open a new issue and we're gonna, you can fix it and send it to us or improve it yourself. Uh, and of course, you can, uh, you can look, translate it. There are like people from all, the, all over the world here, we, and there are not a lot of strings that can be translated in any language. Right now, it, the app is translated in, in 11 languages, and if you install it and your operating system is in, let's say, in um, one of the languages that is translated, uh, for example, Chinese traditional, if that's your operating system on Android, you're gonna get the app translated on Chinese directly. So it's in translating 11 languages, and eight of them are partially translated. From people we don't know, we haven't met them, never, we haven't promoted the app much. So uh, we also have a section called Citizen of the Month, uh, which is some, the, the smallest reward for people that do a lot of work on their free time for the, for the project. Um, and some of, the, some of the people that are involved are our friends, but uh, there are also people. Uh, we, I got contacted uh, yesterday, two days before, from a girl in Kenya, and she wanted to write documentation for the application. I have never met her before. Uh, so what are the next steps of the app, of the project? Uh, very important is to have offline usage uh, for obvious reasons. Although in Euro Europe right now you, have, you don't have any roaming in the countries that are in, inside the EU zone, uh, but it's, it's, for many reasons it's very nice to have offline. Also for privacy reasons it's better to have an offline version uh, of the map. Uh, right now, and this is between us, we are, not, we are just using directly the OpenStreetMap. Um, System, but we are moving to to uh, using map tiles quite in the next uh, weeks or months because this is the right thing to do and also this is the best thing if you want to be to scale the application. 
Community governance. Uh, we need to do some basic rules. We've, we have a code of conduct, but this is not always um, enough for the governance of a project, governance of a project. Online infra, a mailing list uh, is gonna be set up, and also uh, the website, it's nice, but it's, it can be better. And of course, as I mentioned before, documentation, it's very important for people that are new in the project, but also for people that um, uh, want to, to, to see what's happening in more details. But the long-term vision is to have, uh, to pay through the app, we are now in exploring that, and the, better, the best way, anonymous way, one of the ways, not the best way, is to, to use cryptocurrencies to pay through the app. If you go, if you check uh, from small cities like, uh, there is a small city in, in the Netherlands called Nijmegen, uh, and there are on, almost 100 and something, 110 points of interest where people can pay by using cryptocurrencies there. So there are a lot of places where you can pay with cryptocurrencies and also be kind of more safe when you're paying. Uh, right now when you're traveling, usually, it's, you, there are three or four, Booking.com, Airbnb, there are only three or four services that have, have like a monopoly of this uh, service and they know all your data what, on what you're doing. And uh, the last, since I think we're in the end and we don't have much time, uh, we want to introduce li a concept called liquid shareholding for giving back to people that have invested their time on the, on the project. Uh, what does this mean? If you, are doing, if you are improving the code of the application, if you are doing design, if you are working on a community meetup uh, in your own city, and you documented all the steps through, through the GitHub repository or any rep repository, uh, the idea is to, once we have launched the online payments, to give back the, to anyone that has contributed the amount of financial recognition based on the contribution that they have done the last amount of time, six months. So this means that even if myself, if, that I started the, the project, uh, even if I didn't contribute for the last six months, uh, if I have not contributed, this means I will not get compensated uh, based on this system. So we think that's the fair uh, thing to do. It's kind of a, I hate the word, but it's kind of a blockchain or on, in terms of rewards uh, for, the, uh, for the app. So Faleminderit, thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them. Hello. Um, so I really like the privacy approach. Great. Um, but there are some useful features that come from tracking people, and Google kind of ruined that. So, but it's a pity that that, for example, you can't. Um, if you compare, for example, with City Mapper, they do a lot of stuff by tracking their users, but they also they also do pretty useful features. So how do you plan to address that, or is there an idea about that to do it in a privacy-sensitive way, but still offer the same features? In, as, I, as I mentioned during the presentation, once you are using Android, uh, a version of Android that is, comes usually by default with your mobile device, uh, your location, you don't know where your location information is going. And probably that's going to Google, right? Uh, so for that, that's, uh, that's a solution where you can install your own Android version, but that's very complicated for, for daily users. Uh, I think my, this is my personal approach to online privacy, and this is what I tell to people on activities like the crypto party you mentioned before, is that you start um, going off the grid uh, gradually. For example, or what's... Yeah, but what I mean is for some features, you have to track users. Oh, for example? Uh, for example, um, uh, yeah, if there's no data on train delays, for example, you can see who's on the train and 
So there are a lot of features like that. Other companies are doing it. So yeah, any thoughts on that? I, I would be interested to figure out the solution. Uh, if you are on a train and you are giving... Yeah, or for example, uh, you get uh, uh, information on uh, uh, traffic delays or on other stuff, and that's all because people are being tracked or you get information on how busy is a train and maybe you should take the next one. So there are features like that that, that come from tracking people. That's a very nice feature, but it's not on the, on the pipeline for quite some time in the app. Uh, but outside the app, I think if that's, it's about convenience. If you find that convenient, you're going to give out your privacy. Uh, so if you, do, if you want to have your privacy, it's just like locking the door. If you want to be your home to be safe, you need to have like 100 locks. Uh, but if you want to be convenient, you just close the door and leave your house. That's how I say it in general. So I don't know if I answered. It's not, yes, it's not yes. in the pipeline of the, of the Thank project, you. though. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you again.